Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Friday. Welcome to Friday. Yeah, Friday. Russ is being a goofball. Oh, I know you guys are shocked. Like, what are you laughing about? I don't understand. <laughs> He's making faces at the camera I before it goes live. Really? Oh, wait, there's evidence. There's evidence on the other <laughs> camera. <laughs> oh, well, maybe. He's being ridiculous. <laughs> How was your workout? Workout was okay. Yeah? Yeah. Did uh, back and biceps. Okay. But I was going to do abs, and I just, you know. Didn't feel it? Toughed out at the end. I'm yeah. like, I don't feel like doing it anymore, so I left. Okay. <laughs> Okay, how was it? Was it busy? Ah, eh, moderate. Okay. Not, not too bad. Okay. Mm -hmm. I went for a bike ride today. I um didn't. I was gonna ride you know twenty miles like I usually do, and I forgot my water, and my throat was still itchy from the whole incident with the um, burger thing, faux burger thing the other day. Hey, Amy. Hi, Amy. It's good to see you. Um, and so I only rode ten, which you know, all right, that's fine. It's good. I'm happy. You live with that. Uh, you know what? It's fine. Um, so, this week we've been talking about food addiction. Wrap up. <laughs> I told you he was being weird today. I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> so on Monday we talked about what is addiction, and I pulled out my big, you know, psychology DSM diagnostic manual thing and uh, talked to you about it. But basically, you know, I told you about tolerance and desire and cravings and seeking and all of that stuff. But the bottom line that I shared with you was if it's negatively impacting your life, if it's, if you're eating more of it than you, than you feel like you should, or you're spending more money on it than you should, or it's causing you weight gain or health issues or, you know, emotional distress ad infinitum, if it's causing you negative Im impact to your life, then that you probably have something you need to be concerned about. That was the bottom line that I talked about on Monday. On Tuesday, we talked about sugar addic addiction, and I told you that the food companies have determined that humans have a bliss point when it comes to sugar. And for children, that bliss point is higher. They like their, their food sweeter, more sugary, and they will eat more of it than adults. And so, good morning, Valerie. Morning, Valerie. And so the food companies have specifically engineered their food to hit that bliss point. And I gave you the example of Pepsi versus Coca-Cola, whereas Pepsi in um, blind taste tests, just one sip, Pepsi wins. But in overall amount that people, good morning, Bridget, the over, um, overall amount that people will drink over the course of a day, Coke wins because Coke is closer to the bliss point. Pepsi is sweeter, so that first sip is, is more pleasure, but you get too much. You get to that cloyingly sweet, bleh, I've had enough with Pepsi faster than you do with Coke. Good morning, Carol. You have made hey, it all Carol. week. Wow. Woo, good job. Look at that. Nice So job. impressive. High five. <laughs> and so um, I, I, I talk, we talked about how the food companies are really good at making sure that food is right at that bliss point so that you can sit down and eat an entire box of cookies and then all of a sudden realize, oh my goodness, I ate the whole box. So we talked about that on Tuesday. I don't know, I was just remembering one time when I, many, many years ago, when I ate uh, Oreos and a glass of milk. Boy, that, is that two bad combinations, right? Yeah. And just dunking them and then like, I the mean, whole, the whole bag. Yeah, the whole the thing. The whole bag. Of, yeah. I remember how they used to come like the three sleeve things. Like, yep. Oh, God. Yep, absolutely. They're made to be able to do that. Um, and then on Wednesday, we talked about fat and how the fat addiction and that your body, unlike sugar, where your body can say, okay, enough, I don't want any more of that, your body doesn't really have a bliss point or a max point for fat, that your body doesn't really turn fat off. And if you add sugar to fat, so um, obviously uh, there's a lot of processes, processed foods that have fat and sugar in them, or if you, I gave the example of adding barbecue sauce to steak, your body doesn't recognize the fat as coming in because the sugar hides it. And the food companies are really, really good at that. So you can see how um, food addictions are, I don't know, made worse, I guess, uh, exacerbated by the food industry because their goal, we've said this multiple times in the past couple of weeks, the food industry's goal is to make money. And for them to make money, you have to eat a lot of their product. Right. And so they want to be able to override your brain's ability to say, whoa, stop, enough. And go ahead. What's the term they use? Something users, large users or? Um, heavy users. Heavy users is an actual term. That they, In the industry, they call people who use a lot of their product heavy users. And, and does that not sound like a drug user? And then they figure out ways to retarget, mm -hmm. which anybody in marketing knows what that means. Mm -hmm. Retarget those same people to get them to spend even more money because they already know they're... You know. Right. So if they know that you're a user of their product, they're going to target you to use even more of their product. It's easier for them to sell more to someone who already uses their product than to get a new user. Mm -hmm. 
and especially a new user that's going to probably not use as much. So we talked a lot about how the food industry is really engineered to use your, your food addiction triggers to their advantage. And then so yesterday, I was like, okay, great, now what do we do about it? And we, had, we actually did a really long uh, show yesterday. We talked for almost 20 minutes about what do you do about it. So if you're really interested in the details of that, make sure that you go back and watch yesterday's Thursday's show because we did talk about it. But here's the bottom line. What you first, the first thing you have to do is you have to figure out you know, which foods are your addictive issues. And um, is it really a problem for you? And I gave the example of someone who came to me and said that she eats one ounce of dark chocolate a night. And we talked about it. She's not overweight. It's not negatively impacting her life. And I was like, okay, so that's not a problem. One ounce a night is not a big deal. Now, we were just talking to someone the other day who drinks three 44-ounce sodas uh, yes. a day. Yes. A day. Who is, by the way, diabetic. Diabetic. And has already have the discoloring of the feet starting to happen, from what I understand. Right, which is a major uh, issue. Yeah. So, obviously, that addiction is a problem in this person's life and needs to be addressed. So, that, that's kind of the place to start is, where are your problem issues and are they creating a negative impact in your life? Once you understand that, what I recommended that you do is go ahead and start looking at what would my life look like if this dick addiction didn't exist? And I introduced you to the psychology uh, term called WHOOP, which I get into in detail in our master class and, and helping you kind of walk through the process of using WHOOP. But it stands for Wish, Outcome, Obstacles, Plan. And basically what you have to do is look at what does your life look like without it. Um, if, if you were really to you know, outline, this is what it would be, this, is my, this would be my objective, what would that be? And then look at what obstacles stand between you and that, and then come up with a plan to, to address those obstacles. And I know hearing me just say that, it sounds, oh yeah, that sounds really simple. <laughs> I know, I mean, as a human and as a psychologist, it's not that simple. It, it can be really, really challenging. And we talked about all the different triggers that can, that can trigger addiction. We talked about um, like watching TV. Maybe you have something you like to eat when you watch TV. We, I gave the example of people who smoke and who smoke in the car or smoke when they drink. And so um, anything like that, you're going to want to kind of notice and, and, and observe. And obviously, all of this that I'm talking about is easier if you're working with someone who can help you work through it. It's really hard even for me to do this stuff on my own just because, you know, watching yourself is a lot harder than having someone else reflect it back to you. Wish, outcome, obstacle, plan. Yep, that's it. Whoop. <laughs> She got wooed. She has wooed. I think she meant wooed. Yeah. But T, it, I think you meant to have it as a P. Well, unless she meant wooed like exciting. Oh, that's good that's B. In which case, I stand corrected. That is cool. But yeah, it's a it's a really great strategy. It works really well in the psychology space. Um, I, another thing that if, if you have someone you're working with that works really well that I've used that also comes from the the um, drug addiction space is motivational interviewing. And that, and that does require someone who actually knows how to use the skill to be able to help you with it. But that's really the ability, and she fixed it. That's the ability to, um, her phone probably auto-corrected. Probably so, time. I hate when that happens. Um, but motivational interviewing is the ability to have someone really help you walk down that path of how is it negatively affecting you now and what would it look like if, if you were able to make it better. Um, and like I said, that takes someone skilled in motivational interviewing. That's not something you can do on your own. But if you're interested in that particular skill set, there are books out there about it. It is something that I studied uh, extensively when I was in school. So motivational interviewing and the WOOP method together are both really powerful tools for dealing with um, addiction of any kind. So did you have anything you wanted to add? I just want to take a breath. I know. I'm sorry. I was talking really, really fast. But that's no, because it's all good. this stuff is really exciting to me because I know the change it can bring. I've seen it not only in my own life but in my client's life. And so being able to share it and say, hey, try this. It'll make a difference for you. And, you know, it'll, it'll be better for your nutritional health just makes me super excited. Yeah. So um, since it's Friday, we will get off of here and go eat some breakfast. But yes. I did want to say that um, I told you yesterday that our How to Feed a Human was having some... Um, Friends of mine said mercury and retrograde issues. So <laughs> it's fixed. It's working again. So if you hadn't, ha have not had a chance to watch our webinar, How to Feed a Human, it is back up and running. I would encourage you to go watch How to Feed a Human at howtofeedahuman.com. And on that, you'll have an opportunity to get the master class if you are interested in the master class that is also part of the webinar. So you can do that at howtofeedahuman.com. We are on Facebook. Please like our Facebook page if you haven't. 
Um, we are also on Instagram and YouTube. Um, I've been posting pictures on Instagram of our garden, so if you're interested in that, you can find us at RR Journey to Health on Instagram. Um, like, follow, subscribe, share, all those fun things. If you're getting value out of these, please do let other people know. That's how we get to make a difference, and that's kind of our goal. Like, I didn't learn all this stuff just for us, so I want to be able to share it with other people. So do please like and share. Tell other people about us and about the work that we're doing. That would be great. And if you're watching it in replay, you know, comment. I do check back on it and make sure I engage. So yesterday there were 44 comments on our conversation about how to overcome food addiction. And I appreciate every single one of you guys doing that. So please do like and share. Thank you for the hearts and the thumbs up. Those are fun. <laughs> they make me feel good. And I appreciate that because that for me as you know, I'm very much extroverted. You probably figured that out. And for me, getting that validation it is really helpful. So I thank you so much for that. Anything I forgot to tell them? Oh, our, our business website, rnrjourney.com. <laughs> I think that's all I've got. Now. And with that, I will say <laughs> that's it for this. That's it for our show. <laughs> and with that, we will say, eat real food, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have, Have a great, great weekend. weekend we'll see you on Monday.